This video is sponsored by Card Market. Card Market is Europe's largest online marketplace for trading card games. There is no better place to fulfill all your Yu Gi Oh! and card game based needs. The platform is not only exclusive to only Yu Gi Oh! but also has sections for all other major card games. You can find a link um, to Card Market down below in the description. And now, without further ado, let's go into the um, video. What's up, guys? This is Simon from First Card Gaming, and today we're going to talk about Dryshron which are a really cool ritual combo deck that debuted in Genesis Impact a couple days ago. Uh, they've been playable on Dueling Book for uh, just a few days now, and you may have seen them running around your rated games or on uh, DB Grinders' channel. Uh, they've been getting a ton of hype from a bunch of prominent uh, community members, you know, like Pac and Cody, for example, have released their own takes of the deck. Uh, I know Duelist Academy is pretty fond of this deck as well. And uh, there's a lot of options that you can take. So currently, the popular bills tend to be kind of abusing Fibrax uh, and going into tricking of, all, uh, tricking of All Calamities, which should not really come as a surprise because those cards are really degenerate and it's very easy to win with those cards. Um, but they also happen to be, I think, the best options right now. Fortunately, this deck has so many options and so many ways it can go that I think it'll very easily continue to survive and adapt, even if the ban list kind of kills everything. So... This video is going to really show the popular builds right now that go into this Fibrax stuff, but uh, I definitely plan to make follow-up videos for, uh, you know, if this deck uh, has viable options going forward, which it will. Uh, so definitely subscribe if you want to see those coming, uh, hopefully when we get a ban list later this month. Uh, but in this video, I want to cover uh, each of the Drytron cards and some core engine components, and then I want to talk about um, kind of the next game plan, I'll show off some basic combos and then four more advanced combos that people are doing. And uh, after that, I'll talk about uh, kind of an example deck list and then my thoughts on the deck and some options where it can go uh, currently or even post ban list. So this is probably going to be a long one. Uh, I would strap in. But now let's just get started with uh, the drive fund cards. So the first drive fund card and the most important is Cyber Angel Benton. Now you may be thinking, this is not a drive fund card. And you're right, but... Uh, this card is definitely one of the best cards in the deck, if not the best card. And it's just important to know what Ben 10 does for the deck before you read the, uh, the drive from the cards. So the first effect is not super relevant. What we're looking for is this last effect, where if it's tributed, you can add a life carry monster from your deck to your hand. So it's tributed by any means, you can do that. And this is not once per turn. So kind of continuing the trend of abusing cards with no once per turn, Ben 10 is kind of the, one of the core components of this deck where all the Drytrons tribute ritual monsters, and you'll be aiming to tribute Benton repeatedly, and you can add more copies of Benton and just get a ton of advantage that way and overwhelm the opponent. So with her out of the way, uh, let's talk about the level 1s. There are five of them. There's uh, Alpha Thuban, Beta Rastaban, Gamma Altanen, Delta Alteus, and Zeta Aldeba. So these are complicated names. You will save yourself and everyone else a lot of trouble if you just call them Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, and Zeta. So I'll be using that from now on. And I'm actually going to reorder these slightly. I'm going to put this over here, this over here. Uh, they all have the same text pretty much, which I'm going to pull up on screen right now. Um, so they have this text. They can't be normal summoner set, and they can only be special summoned by Drytron card effects. So keep that in mind. You can't like monster reborn these. You also can't ice dragon prison these, which is pretty relevant. Uh, but they have to be special summoned with Drytron effects, which is usually their own. Uh, and then they all have the shared effect where you can special summon them from your hand or graveyard in defense uh, by tributing any other Drytron or any ritual monster from your hand or field. So that's why this card is so strong in conjunction with Ben 10, is because these can all tribute Ben 10 from hand or field and then just add more fairies. So they all tribute and then they summon themselves and then they do something else. I'll get into that a bit later. After that, they have this extremely unique restriction, which is very important to understand if you want to play this deck. Uh, you can't special summon monsters that turn, except monsters that can't be normal summon or set. So this doesn't mean you can't normal summon monsters. It means if you special summon a monster, it can't be normal summonable. So if you summon Fibrax, you can't get a Despot, uh, or you can't get a Plague Spreader because these are normal summonable cards. Um, what this means is that you also are able to special summon any Drytron, any Ritual, and any extra deck monster, because none of those can be normal summon. So you're, you're good to go on all of those. But it does mean that you can't go into, like, like if you summon a Roridon, you can't use this effect to get a Mecha Phantom Beast from the deck, because those are all normal summonable. So it's a very unique 
restriction, and it's important to know when you're playing this deck and to kind of plan your combos around. So that being said, uh, I'm going to take this off. Uh, they all have that shared text, and then they all do something in addition uh, to the summon. So Alpha adds any ritual monster. So this is uh, a core card in your deck. It tutors you know, your whole ritual monster component, and it's important to play this card at three. Zeta is the same, but it adds a ritual spell. So that's why I reordered these cards. These two are very similar. They are really the heart and soul of your deck. They add the monster and the spell component, and you just want to see these cards every hand, uh, turn one. So these are both three ofs, and they're the best, in my opinion. Uh, after that, you have Gamma. Uh, Gamma special summons a Drytron from your graveyard uh, with 2,000 attack, uh, except for another Gamma. So this card is used for kind of an extender. You'll typically go through your regular Drytrons, uh, or rather your uh, your core Drytrons, and then you'll go to a Gamma to bring back another one after you've done some Link plays or some Ritual plays. And it helps you just get more monsters on the board to kind of extend and push, because you can just Link Summon with these. Uh, you have Delta. Delta is basically Upstart Goblin. You can reveal a Ritual, and then you draw a card. And you play a lot of Rituals, so it's very easy to get this condition, and uh, you can just get a free card off of this. Uh, it's not as good as Alpha and Zeta because the card you draw is random, it's not guaranteed, whereas these two can just get whatever you want. But uh, this is a pretty good card. And uh, the last one is uh, Beta. Beta recycles a banished Drytron monster uh, to the graveyard. So this is by far the weakest of the five effects, and it wouldn't surprise me to see this card just not get played in kind of optimized competitive lists. Or if you do play it, probably one at the most, because this is the least useful of all of them. Uh, it comes up occasionally. And it might be good in some matchups, but uh, in general, this is the weakest one. So those are the main deck monsters. Uh, and actually, before I talk about the rituals, I'm going to talk about uh, the ritual spell right here, Meteonus Drytron. This is one of the best ritual spells I've ever read. It is uh, really, really, really good, and is also kind of the cornerstone of this deck alongside Ben 10 and the level 1s. Uh, so Meteonus ritual summons any ritual monster, so it doesn't have to be a Drytron ritual. It can be any ritual, which is why it's so good. And it summons it from the hand or graveyard. And the reason that's insane is because you can add a really powerful ritual monster, like, like Herald of Ultimateness, for example. You can tribute it with the Drytron, get it in the graveyard, and then you can just Meteonus it back. So that's kind of one of the core components of your deck. And the way that it works is you don't care about levels, like most ritual spells. You tribute monsters whose attack uh, equals or exceeds the attack of the monster you're trying to summon. So for a card like Herald of Ultimateness with 2k attack, you can tribute any of these Drytrons, which are all 2,000 attack monsters. Uh, you can tribute any one of them to bring out this Herald. You know, for for other bigger monsters, you can tribute any two Drytron and they'll bring out that monster. And so this card is it's a very unique method of virtual summoning, and it's really strong. Uh, finally, if that wasn't enough, if this card's in your graveyard, you can target a Drytron monster you control, and then it loses a thousand attack, and you add back Meteonus. And so while this recursion effect is once per turn, the ritual summoning effect is not. So if you have multiple copies of Meteonis, or if you add back Meteonis from the graveyard multiple times, you can just keep Ritual Summoning, and that's really good. So this card is incredible. It's uh, definitely one of the most important pieces of this deck, and it's the reason the deck functions. It really, the whole deck is built around, you know, you get your Ritual cards either in hand or in the grave. It doesn't really matter, and then you bring them out uh, using Meteonis, and uh, it's a crucial component to this deck. Moving on, you have the two big bosses. Uh, you have Drytron Meteonis Draconids and Drytron Meteonis Quadrantis. These are both level 12, and they are 4k. And uh, they both gain kind of bonus effects when you use uh, two levels or less of monsters to ritual summon them. So typically, you'll distribute two uh, Drytrons, uh, which have a combined 4,000 attack, and you can bring out either one of these. So that's how you get those bonus effects. But you can also attribute you know, one to bring out the other in the graveyard, for example, and uh, that can come up. They're both pretty scary, and they have their pros, but they also have their cons. Uh, these are both also kind of bricky, and so you may not want to run these, but if you do, I would play either of these at one at most. Uh, Draconids is monster hate, so it's untargetable with monster effects, and uh, if you get the bonus effect, you can tribute, uh, or rather you can attack all of your opponent's special summon monsters once each. So kind of rarely you can cheese out OTKs with this, but I wouldn't say it comes up that much. Uh, the better effect is that during the opponent's turn, it's Disruption. You can banish a uh, combined uh, either 2k or 4k attack from your grave, and then you pop either one or two cards your opponent controls, depending on how much attack you banished. Uh, so that's uh, decent for Disruption. This is a viable card to end on turn one sometimes, but it's, uh, I would say, typically not what you see. But I think going forward, you know, this is just an option as uh, you could play this card as, as just kind of uh, augmenting your end board. 
And as a 4K attack monster, it's also good for closing out games. And the other one is Quadrantids. Uh, if you get uh, this card's bonus effect, then it becomes Harpy's Feather Duster. You destroy all of your opponent's... Uh, let me fix this. You destroy all your opponent's spell traps. And uh, it's also untargetable with spell trap cards or effects. So this is relevant against stuff like uh, the Virtual World Trap or Impermanence or uh, several other cards in the metagame right now. Uh, it also floats, so if it gets destroyed, you can revive Drytron from your graveyard, whose combined attack equals exactly 4,000. So if you play both and you've already properly summoned the Draconids, you could bring it back in theory, but typically you'll be bringing back two of the mini Drytrons from the graveyard, which is just nice. It's a bonus like added effect. And it makes this card really sticky, because if they kill this card and you bring back two Drytrons and then you add back a Mediotis, you can just summon this out again. And uh, it can be annoying to kind of deal with these cards repeatedly in longer games, especially against like back row decks. So just op options to keep in mind. I, I wouldn't say that they're uh, mandatory, but definitely play no more than one of each if you do play them. Moving on to the spells, uh, Drypad Nova is their quick launch or their e-telly or whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's a normal spell, and it fetches any Drypad from the deck, but it gets destroyed in the end phase. So uh, this card is just an easy tutor for all of your main deck Drytrons. You can only activate it once per turn. Uh, this is not a use once per turn, this is activate once per turn. So if they happen to negate the activation with a card like Herald of the Arclight or uh, Forlode Savage, you can just use another one if you have it. This also imposes the Drytron restriction on you, so just keep that in mind. It's not going to be super relevant because you will try to use Drytrons almost every turn, so uh, just keep in mind that this also restricts you, so that's uh, a factor of this card. You have Fafnir, this is their field spell. It adds any Drytron spell trap in your deck to your hand when you activate this card. So almost always you get Nova with this card. Uh, this can also search Meteonis if you need to. Uh, usually if you already have a Nova, you will typically get Meteonis. Uh, and there's some other spell trap options, but I'll be going over this later. And in my opinion, they're not very good. So keep these three, Meteonis, Nova, and Fafnir in mind as the three best spells of the deck. Uh, it has some other effects. Uh, one is that the activation and the activated effects of your ritual spells can't be negated, so this is quite useful playing into disruption if they let this go and then they try to negate your Nova, or not the Nova, but if they try to negate your Meteonis and they forget, then you know this card is kind of like Meltdown, it protects your ritual summons, which is nice. Uh, and then its last effect is pretty unique. Uh, if a monster is normal, a special summon face up while you control a Drytron, you can reduce that monster's level by one for every 1,000 attack it has. Uh, this is a really useful and very annoying tool against decks like Virtual World that rely on their monsters having specific levels. So decks that Synchro Summon or Exceed Summon can be affected by this in a pretty surprising way. So like they'll summon like a Lulu, and you'll make it level 2, and then suddenly there's no way for them to use that Lulu at all. So uh, I would say this is important to know for certain matchups. Just don't forget it. It could win you the game. Uh, overall, this field spell is quite good. Mainly, you play this to get Nova. And uh, yeah. Of the three spells, uh, you have Eclipse. Eclipse recycles a Drytron in your graveyard. Uh, this is not super relevant because these cards do the same thing in the graveyard as in the hand. Uh, although it is nice to have one for tribute, I guess, for another Drytron in your graveyard, but I wouldn't say it's that good. And the other attack is uh, the other effect is attack modulation, so that's never really relevant. Uh, Asterism is, I think, the best of these three secondary cards. Asterism is a quick play where you can target a Drytron or a Ritual Monster that you control, and a face-up monster your opponent controls, your guy loses an attack, and then you destroy the opponent's monster. So this is Disruption, and it's also, uh, it being a quick play means you can theoretically use this card going second, so like you can Fafnir for Asterism if you already have a Nova, and then you can Nova, and then you can activate Asterism, and you can clear one of their monsters. So uh, that, I think, in my opinion, makes Asterism the most viable of these three kind of uh, more mediocre spell traps. So if you play one of those, I would play one Asterism, but uh, I think typically you'll see zero. Finally, you have the Counter Trap, which just negates a summon uh, while you control a Ritual Monster, and then it summons the monster to the deck. Uh, again, this is a Counter Trap. You have a lot of combos in this deck that really just aim to win you the game, so Meteor Shower is just typically not played. Again, the problem with all these spell traps is you just want to get Nova with this card, and so anytime you play one of these, you're hoping you already open a Nova, and then your Fafnir will get it, and it's just typically not worth it for most of these. Uh, finally, there's a pretty big ritual lineup over here. I'm not going to talk about all of them because this video would take forever if that was the case, but I'll uh, focus on a few briefly. Um, the first is Herald of Perfection. This is a card that has been really popular in online builds, and that's because you couple it with uh, Pre-Preparation of Rites and uh, Dawn of the Herald. 
and it's exploiting this interaction between Dawn of the Herald and Cyber Angel Benton that the Cyber Herald deck has abused for a long, long time. Uh, and it's just a popular option because you summon this before you do your combos, and then Perfection will protect your combo. Another popular option is Herald of Ultimateness, which is basically an upgraded version of Perfection. It has slightly higher stats, and it also negates summons on top of being an Omni Negate. So that is really good versus cards like uh, Zodiac Borbo, when, you know, if you have negates and Zodiac doesn't care, they'll just attack direct and then they'll make like a six material Zeus and they'll just wipe your whole board. But Ultimatus will just negate summon. So that's uh, quite relevant. Uh, this card is, you know, this is no major drawbacks over Perfection because this deck doesn't care about levels. Normally you would care that this is level 12, but this deck only cares about attack. And this card is 2000 attack exactly, so you can distribute any one dry trunk for it. Um, but the reason Perfection is played is because it's much better in conjunction with Pre-Preparation uh, pre of Rights, uh, because Dawn of the Herald is an insane card. But I'll talk about that more when I cover the whole uh, pre-prep combo that people are doing in this deck. Uh, and the last card I want to talk about actually in depth is Cyber Angel Natasha, because I want to single out this card uh, due to how crazy it is. Uh, first of all, notice that all three of these cards are Light Fairy Rituals, and that means they're all fetchable off of Ben 10. Uh, Natasha especially is really, really good. Uh, so it has a couple effects. It has a life point gain effect, which is uh, not super relevant. You can gain a lot of life points with this, but that's always just a luxury. It has the ability to infinitely negate attacks on a virtual monster that you control, because this card has no once per turns on it yet again. This card just has no once per turn anywhere to be found. So if they have six monsters and you have a defense position Natasha, you can negate all six attacks and they just can't kill this card, which is... a uh, Typically, those will get removed by some other means, but it's relevant to know. Uh, finally, if it's in the graveyard and it's been properly summoned, that's the important part. You have to properly summon Natasha first, then you can banish another Cyber Angel, and then you can target a monster your opponent controls, you steal the monster, and you bring back Natasha. So this effectively becomes like six Lake material if you have three Banton in the graveyard. You just use Natasha three times, and you steal three of your opponent's monsters, and you make like a humongous access code, and you just go for game. And that makes this card ridiculous at clearing established boards, and just it's a very potent tool going second, or if they mount a comeback on turn two, it's really good for going uh, turn three into their board. Uh, in particular, I want to notice uh, note this card's utility against a Zodiac when they make like a Zeus with a material. Uh, Natasha will just steal the Zeus, and then you nuke their board with their own Zeus, or they're forced to nuke their own board with Zeus. And uh, I think this card is incredible. I think you really should be running this card in every single Drytron list, but uh, I know some people aren't. Uh, I don't really get it, but uh, this card is amazing. And just to briefly talk about some other options, uh, Emmer Factor Pain is really cool. Uh, it makes your opponent skip their main phase one, uh, and it's kind of a floodgate for Fusion and Synchro uh, Chaos Max is an option. This is un uh, untargetable and indestructible. Also, Dragoon can't out this because he can't destroy this. And uh, it does double piercing battle damage, so you can OTK people with it. Uh, Lord of the Red is a kind of janky, weird option, but it's fun. It uh, destroys stuff, and you can even use this card in conjunction with like Artifact Scythe to Scythe block them. Uh, some people are fond of Megalith cards in this deck. You just play a Megalith engine, and you use it to access cards like Fool and Bethor, and uh, it's it's viable. Uh, Necros, uh, Necros cards similarly are also viable. You can also just play like a one of Trish as just a going second option because Trish is incredible. Uh, Gus Kraken is another thing you can play. You just uh, look at two cards in your hand and you just hand loop them. You can even summon this multiple times per turn uh, and just hand loop multiples. So there's there's so many viable ritual cards you can play in this deck and just so many directions you can take it that it's you know it's a really exciting deck to kind of build and optimize and see what you prefer. Um, but yeah, these are some other options over here. I'm going to talk about these in a deck profile, which is probably going to be in a follow up video, so this one doesn't get too long. Uh, but that, does, that about does it. I'm going to show up some quick combos now. Uh, hopefully, now that you're more familiar with what these cards do, uh, we're going to jump into the combo section of the video. Now I'm going to cover two very short, very quick uh, basic combos with this deck, which I think are just important to know. And they'll also serve as kind of a, a gradual intro into seeing how these cards kind of interact with each other, because there's a lot to learn, and it can be overwhelming if it's your first time seeing these drive trend cards. So kind of a mini combo to start things off. Uh, in this deck, in general, I think it's important to be able to improvise and not to just memorize every possible combination of two cards because a lot of you know your combos will get you to the same point, and then you can just realize, oh, I have you know this much stuff on my board, I can just go for this combo. Uh, so I think it's just important to 
uh, kind of know the general shape of combos, but I wouldn't bother memorizing, you know, like every possible uh, two card combo out there. But uh, if you're going to memorize one, I would say this is one of them, uh, Alpha Zeta. This is very much a classic uh, combo with this deck. You have a lot of ways to access both of these cards, and you play both of three. So you can get either of these off Cyber Emergency or Drytron Nova, or you can get Drytron Nova off the Field Spell, which then gets one of these, etc. So, uh, yeah, let's just go ahead. Uh, you're going to use Alpha, tributing your Zeta in hand. Uh, to summon itself and then add a Ben 10 because it adds any ritual monster. Uh, Zeta is a spell searcher, so we're going to use that to tribute the Ben 10 that we just added to summon itself. We'll get a copy of Medionis, the ritual spell. That will trigger the Ben 10 and will add any Light Fairy. Uh, we're going to add a Herald of Orange Light, and this card uh, is going to come up in later combos because it's a tuner, but we're not really going to get into it for uh, this combo. So this can be any fairy. This could be another Ben 10 as well, which is very, very useful when you have a bunch of Drytrons in your hand because you can just keep triggering Ben 10 for free. And you get, uh, you know, a ton of pluses off of that. Uh, so now we have two Drytrons in the board, and uh, this combo is going to be utilizing Union Carrier to get more Drytrons. And so uh, basically from this board of three Drytrons, we're going to uh, link both off into Union Carrier because, you know, they're both light machines. It's going to target itself and equip Dawn Knight from the deck to itself. Uh, Dawn Knight is basically Armageddon Knight, but for lights, but it only triggers when Dawn Knight goes from the field to the graveyard. Uh, and so we're going to use this to basically foolish any Drytron we want from the deck to the grave, and that Drytron will instantly be live in the graveyard. Because uh, the problem with Carrier is that Carrier says you can't special summon monsters with that equipped card's name for the rest of the turn. So if you equip a Drytron directly, it's for, you know, the next turn. It's not for the current turn. But if you equip Dawn Knight, you can use that Drytron that you sent in the same turn. Uh, so it's important to notice that now Union Carrier actually has 2,000 attack because it gets buffed. And because it has 2,000 attack, we can use Medionis, since it's a machine. Uh, Medionis will uh, be able to ritual summon any ritual monster with 2,000 or less attack. So we're going to go ahead and activate that now in order to get Carrier off the field. Uh, this is important because Carrier can't be linked away, so it's actually very hard to get it off the field if you don't tribute it for Medionis. So Carrier and Donnay both go to Grave to bring back a Ben 10, because this is under 2,000 attack. And then the Donnay will trigger, and we will dump uh, another Drytron name. So in this case, we'll get Gamma. Uh, Gamma is the one that special summons back another Drytron. Uh, and then finally, we'll use Gamma's effect to tribute the Benton on the field. We'll go to Grave, we'll bring itself back, and another Drytron. It doesn't really matter which one you bring back. Uh, and then that will trigger the Benton, we'll get another Fairy. And then finally, we have Medionis in Grave. We'll use its effect to add itself back to hand. On uh, one of the end, we'll lower one of the uh, Drytrons in the field by 1000 attack. So, what this shows is that a Union Carrier gave us access to another Drytron name. And this is important because if you don't have access to that many names in the first turn, you want to access as many as possible for your turn three push. So being able to consistently dump Drytrons that you don't already have is actually very, very useful because it makes your follow-up turns very, very scary. Uh, another reason this is solid is because this lets you trigger Benten an additional time. So we got two searches off Benten instead of just one. And uh, that's going to be relevant for later on when we get into fiber combos and we want multiple fairies to uh, kind of extend our combos. And you'll notice that the board is the same before and after the Union Carrier. We have two Drytrons, so there's a you know there's no net loss of monsters on board. And uh, yeah, the only downside is we have already used Medionis, so we only have one more use for this turn. So if you're playing a very ritual summon focus deck, maybe you don't want to use this combo because you are kind of gated by how many times you can use Medionis per turn. Um, but this is just a very, you know, quick, reliable combo for getting access to more Drytron names. And this is why a lot of people are playing Union Carrier plus Dawn Knight in this deck. Uh, this final mini combo in this video is going to show off kind of a tool you have going second in certain matchups. Uh, so this particular board state is a pretty common example of what can happen against Virtual World. Uh, where let's say you hand trap them, like uh, you use Gamma on their Lulu or something, and they've managed to end on Shen Shen plus uh, the trap Shuche with fodder for the trap. Uh, these should be banished, don't worry about it. And uh, it's actually very, very annoying to play into the Shen Shen because it has this effect, it's kind of like a macrocosmos where all your monsters on field get banished. And so if your Drytrons get banished, it becomes kind of annoying to put any kind of meaningful board up through this. Uh, without Zeus, at least. And so Zeus makes this very, very easy, and it's one of the most potent tools in your arsenal for very little investment. So this hand has a uh, Gamma, Zeta, and just some monster, uh, some fodder. Benton is the best, but uh, you'll have three other cards alongside this. We're going to go ahead and use Gamma, tributing the Zeta, 
uh, summit itself, and then we'll reborn the Zeta that we just tributed. So very minimal investment, and this didn't get banished because it went from hand to grave. We're going to overlay for uh, Lyralisk Assembled Nightingale. So this card can attack directly, and we're going to use it similarly to how Zodiac uses Borbo, where we just poke them, and then we slap a Zeus on top. Uh, it has an effect where you can detach an Xyz material as a quick effect, and then until the end of the turn, your Lyralisk monsters don't die to battle or card effects, and you take no battle damage. So this kind of destruction protection is really relevant against uh, against Virtual World 2 for example. Uh, it also works against Dogmatic of Punishment, uh, Zodiac Dryden, Conquistador, and a whole bunch of other cards. And essentially, it just makes it so that your opponent has a really hard time. Once you've made this rank 1, uh, it's really hard for them to stop Zeus from actually hitting the field. But they're also really not going to want to use any disruption on any individual Drytron because it's just so small and so free for you that they'll never want to like hit, like hit you when you have two Drytron on field. So it's just a very simple, low investment way to get uh, your Nightingale up. So we're going to go into battle phase. We're going to poke them twice because this can attack multiple times. Poke for 800 total. And then main phase two, we're going to slap a Zeus on top and that will out the board. So yeah, so that's that. This is just an example tool. This comes up uh, not only against this board, but against uh, a ton of slower matchups, such as like Zodiac. Uh, Zodiac Outlitch is one. Um, Prank Kid is another, for example. This just comes up in like a ton of different matchups, and uh, this Zeus is very useful for clearing the board. And you've only used this Gamma here. This was only Gamma expended. You didn't Normal Summon. You still have this Zeta uh, that you can use. You have Benton in hand, so you have a ton of follow-up. Uh, and I think it's just very, very strong and just important to know. This Nightingale is uh, really good. There's another rank 1 Winged Beast that people are playing. Uh, I think the name is something like Kikinagashi Fucho. It's basically a 0, zero Towers, so it's unaffected by everything, uh, and that makes it better going into like multiple back row. So for example, if you have like a Nightingale against Zoo Outlitch and they have Dryden and Conquistador, they can use both to get rid of your Nightingale. Like if you uh, build a Dryden effect and then you chain Nightingale and then they chain Conquistador and then it pops your Nightingale. Uh, but at that point, also your Nightingale is kind of already traded into two disruptions, so it's kind of done its job already. But uh, the Fucho, the other rank one, is something I'll talk about a little more later. Uh, it is a little better into multiple disruption, but it does have its downsides. Uh, and those will be covered in the deck profile video, probably following this. Uh, but for now, I'm using Nightingale, and it's just a very nice way to get Zeus. Uh, because you can make it with two or more level ones, you can also use this uh, with three Drytrons, and then you end up with a four material Zeus, which can come up in some matchups. Um, if they ever manage to trigger uh, this destruction effect, where you can attach a card from your hand deck or extra deck, you can just treat this as like a foolish burial, and you can get another Drytron name, or you can get a ritual name into the graveyard for free, and that's very good. And then finally, the last uh, but very important use of this card is that this is a machine with 3,000 attack. So if you ever need to virtual summon a monster and you have a Zeus out, you can actually use this as ritual fodder for the Meteonis. Because if you recall the attacks of the Meteonis, all you have to do is tribute machines. And so this can bring out any one ritual with 3k or less attack. And that does come up in, uh, in some matchups. So yeah, this is uh, just in a really cool trick I wanted to show with this deck. This comes up in so many matchups you would not believe. Uh, so I would recommend running Zeus in, uh, in this deck no matter what. And uh, yeah, that's going to actually wrap it up for, I think, this uh, this video. This is kind of wanted to be uh, an intro video for this archetype and showing off just some very small combos. Uh, the next ones are going to be kind of more intricate combos and then a deck profile video as well. Uh, it was going to be all one video, but then it ended up being like an hour long. And so uh, it's been re-edited to be multiple. And uh, I would just stay subscribed if you want to see those. Like and comment. Let me know what you want to see. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Thank you.